Today on BladeHQ.com, we're taking a look at the Spyderco Centafonte Memory. Designed by Frank Centafonte, the custom maker, the genius, as I've heard him called on Blade Forums. And I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, Centafonte. I, I never found anything exact on how to pronounce his name. But nonetheless, this is a beautiful little knife. Beautiful little folder. Let's go over the specs on it. We'll do a little size comparison with the uh, Spyderco Air, which is highly attractive but doesn't have a pocket clip. As well, we're going to take a look at the Spyderco Centafonte 3, this little blade here, as well as the CRKT Centafonte. So you know that a company, a, uh, a designer, has made a name for himself when so many companies have picked him up and you see these tribute knives all over the place. So, pretty cool. Let's go over the specs on this knife. The overall length on it is seven inches, just over seven inches. Blade length is three inches. The blade is made from VG10 steel, flat ground, made in Seki City, Japan, which I'd love to visit someday. I have this dream to uh, hit up like Maniago, Italy, Seki City, and that town in Germany that I can't remember the name of. Just kind of go on a knife making world tour. So if anyone is interested in sending Ben and his camera on the knife making world tour, let me know. Ben at bladehq.com and I'd be happy to book the plane tickets and send you the bill. And then I bring back great footage. So let me know if you are a rich investor looking for some exciting footage from across the world. I am your man. Anyway, let's get back to this knife and I'll stop uh, dreaming. Made in Seki City, Japan. And check out that titanium on there. Blue anodized titanium, just gorgeous. It's got my fingerprints all over it now, but just very pretty. I'm loving that backspacer with the filing on it. Very, very pretty. Great fit and finish on this blade. And you can see that silver carbon fiber insert there. And that's all for the beauty factor. I like that cutout to the uh, liner lock. Let me show you the uh, blade play on it, if there is any. Nope, just a little bit of flex in the blade. Forward and back, nothing. Rock solid. Let's take a look at blade centering. Looks about right. Maybe just slightly off to the left there. If you can see that. Very pretty knife. I was noticing the pivot too. I uh, am not super mechanically inclined, but I, I know that I don't have that kind of adjustment tool in my toolkit. So I'm curious if you know what that is, or if it's a proprietary Spyderco thing. But the pivot definitely has that funky little dealio on there. Very smooth. I noticed that as well, opening it. Very smooth blade. Let's show you it in comparison to a tactical clothespin for size comparison's sake. Nice little blade. It's a little bit heavy, 3.3 ounces for what I expected. Let's take a look at blade, at handle thickness as well as blade thickness. Handle thickness first. Uh, 0.42 inches and the blade thickness is 0 0.089. Wanted to mention as well the pocket clip is, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, removable, not reversible, and it is tip down carry only. So you're definitely going to be stuck with that. And it appears, I'm just kind of checking this out a little bit, it looks like it's rivet construction. Looking at the knife as a whole, looks like you can take that scale off if you like, but I'm not sure how much adjustment you can do after that. Maybe those are screws. I'm not really certain. You can just kind of see those three screws or rivets poking out there. But this is the kind of piece that, kind of a gentleman's folder, maybe even a safe queen, just depending on what your personal preference is. $219.95 currently on bladehq.com. That's the place to buy it. Let me uh, just mention really quickly, let's compare it 
to the Spyderco Air. Now the Air weighs 1.2 ounces, no pocket clip on that, which is, uh, in my opinion, the only bad thing about this knife. Can do no wrong except for that pocket clip. Beautiful little knife. You can see basically the same silver carbon fiber. That's why I wanted to compare them. But uh, 5.9 inches on the overall length on the Air versus 7 inches. So just to give you an idea of different options out there, Warncliffe blade here and uh, also flat ground. Now I wanted to show you the Centafonte 3. This is a $58.98, $58.95, excuse me, made in Cent uh, Seki City as well. Uh, feel free to buy me a plane ticket and uh, check it out. A little bit of a swedge there. You can kind of see similar designs there. This one is... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, dedicated to Santa Fonte, um, who I'm trying to remember when he died. I don't have it right here in front of me, but a few years back he died. And uh, so he designed this one, and it came out, and they called it the memory. I believe it came out after he died. And this one, I'm not exactly sure when it came out, but you can kind of see, eh, they've got some similarities. But then they're both knives too, right? <laughs> anyway. Centafonte 3 there, overall length, 7.5 inches. And this one is a $58 knife, VG10 steel. This one's got VG10 as well. I think that titanium is going to drive that price up quite a bit. So similar blades. And last but not least, let's take a look at this $27.50 CRKT Centafonte Tribute 2. It is a back lock. And... Uh, Nice little blade, the uh, blade steel, 7CR17 MOV steel, made in China, CRKT, and this is a Centafonte Tribute Knife. So, great contributor to, he died in, oh, there we go, died in uh, September 2009. And uh, he designed this one, but he died before he could see it go into production. So, kind of cool to see this posthumous version of one of the knives he designed, backlock micarta scales on it, satin blade, uh, blade length is 2.8 inches, and the overall length is 6 and 3 quarters. So yeah, I mean 2009, I was not really in the knife community at that point, but I'm confident that Frank Santafonte was a great contributor to the knife community, just judging by his designs and judging by the fact that we still carry his stuff. That's definitely a tribute to the man and his work. So, very cool stuff. Check them out on BladeHQ.com. That is a place to buy your knives if you're not aware. I'm sure you're aware because you're watching this video. But if you're not, that is a place to buy your knives. BladeHQ.com. And uh, this one, like I mentioned, is $219, $219, excuse me, and 95 cents. So kind of an expensive piece, but very beautiful piece as well. I'm gonna clean it up here before I throw it back in the box. And this one could be yours. Could be yours. Buy it now on bladehq.com.